Welcome to e-learning of VTU. Now in this session, we shall discuss about doubly linked list. In the previous session, we have talked about the circular list. And not only that, the main difference between the doubly linked list and the other singly linked list is that it's obvious that the number of links, what we have uh, for the doubly linked list is two, whereas for the normal you know, linked list, it is one. That is why it's called a singly linked list, whether it is circular or otherwise. So as usual, we will be talking about how to construct a doubly linked list, how to you know, add or insert in the front or after a key element or at the end. And also we shall show the deletion process in a doubly linked list. Now the major advantage of doubly linked list, as you can guess, is that you can traverse on both sides. You can traverse from left to right as well as from right to left because we have two links. Whereas in a singly linked list, you can't traverse uh, you know, both ways, but you can do only from left to right because P is pointing to the first node and you can just uh, take the link field and go to the next, next, next and so on until the last, last node or last element where the last node is, you know, the link field is null. Now the, uh, again, uh, doubly linked list has only one pointer like singly linked list, but you know, at any point of time you can look back. That means you can see the previous node because you have a previous pointer. So these two links are very helpful in either going forward or backwards. Okay, let me just now go to the PPT and uh, we shall study the various operations on this doubly linked list. Okay, so as we have just uh, started with the doubly linked list, yeah, is similar to singly linked list except that each node has two pointers. So you can just take a look at this figure where just uh, have a look at this middle node which is 12. You can see here this is the left pointer and this is the right pointer. I'll call this as previous pointer and the next pointer. So you can see that uh, the last node in this doubly linked list, the previous pointer exists, but not the next pointer. That's because that this is the last node because we don't have any node after this. Similarly, if you look at the first node that is 15, you can see that the previous there is nothing. That means it's the first node and the next pointer actually points to its next node, which is 12. So if you take the first node, the previous pointer is null. If you take the last node, the next pointer is null, indicating that you have these significant uh, differences of these first and uh, last with respect to the intermittent nodes. So any intermittent node, you will have both left as well as the right pointer or the previous and the next pointer pointing to its previous node and the next. So one to the next node and one to the previous. So these are the two links. And uh, you can guess again that like in a singly linked list, you have one link. In doubly linked list, you have two links. Now, can we have, I mean, can we increase the number of links. Yes, it's possible. So that's again we will discuss later. It's called as multi-linked structure. So it's not just one or two. It could be like more than two as well. And uh, you know you can traverse both ways. You can insert anywhere very very easily. That means you don't need to. Uh, use extra pointers even for deletion without using additional pointers. So that's another advantage because you can look back. So once you get the node to be deleted, its address, you can actually find its previous node address as well as the next node address. Hence, deletion becomes straightforward. So you don't need to carry any extra or auxiliary pointers. So that's the biggest advantage 
of this doubly linked list. So one of the applications, if you look at it, uh, you know, uh, not just one, there could be many applications. Uh, I, I'll just uh, quote one or two here. For instance, you can think of, uh, you know, an editor, a text editor, where you have a series of characters, it means a string in each line. And supposing, assume that you want to design one such editor, you can actually treat each line being stored in a doubly linked list in which each character, let's assume that's being stored in a node. So when you move the cursor, it's as if that you are moving in a doubly linked list. Now, supposing if you want to delete a character, that's very simple that you can delete and you can actually relink. That means adjust your linked list. And when the cursor goes backwards, again, you are as if that traversing the doubly linked doubly linked list in a backward direction. So you can treat or you can simulate the entire, you know, uh, work, what we carry out in a normal text editor, and the whole thing can be shown or can be implemented uh, by using a doubly linked list. The same thing is true even if you want to have browsers where you, you want to go to one or another, the current page to the next page, from current page to the previous page, like, uh, you know, the buttons which you have next and previous. So you can in implement by using this doubly link, that's storing the next uh, web page address or, or and the previous web page address. So it becomes more easier to uh, treat uh, or maintain doubly linked list wherever we require the traversal on both the sides. Right, so now we shall take up how to create uh, a doubly linked list from scratch. So remember that we, that the structure of any doubly linked list is that the, the, the middle one, of course, is called as the info field, uh, which is similar to your uh, singly linked list. Here, instead of just one next field, we have two link fields. So this is my previous and this is my next. So each node in a doubly linked list, there's a structure, will have two, you know, pointers, one called as previous pointing to the previous node, another called as next pointing to the next node. So let me just erase this. Okay, so now if you want to create uh, a doubly linked list from scratch, so as usual, the first node, we will create uh, memory or we request for dynamic memory. And let me call that as Q. So this is my temporary variable called Q, wherein we have info, previous and next. So info, it's very simple. We just put Q of info as 15. And uh, since this being the first node, its previous is null and its next is also null. So what we do is the previous of this Q is marked as null and the next of Q also can be made as null or P because initially when you call this creation, we will send the pointer P with nil value or null. So at this point of time, this has got actually nil. So either you write nil or P, it's one and the same. Okay, next we have this pointer which is going to be exposed to the calling program and hence we just make P to point to this first node. So you just return the address of this P back to the calling program. That's it. So you got your first node created for the doubly linked list. Okay, now let us try to insert a new node called 12 prior to that means in front of this 15. So how do we do that? Okay, now let's again create a new node called Q, put the info as 12, right? So this is the diagram for that. So this is the diagram. And uh, okay, so this is the diagram and uh, Q is pointing. Now we have to attach this to this. 
So again, remember in any linked list, once you draw the figure, it's easy to write the code, right? Or the algorithmic statement, right? So because in, in, in a normal list, it becomes so easy, but in doubly linked list, sometimes it may be confusing that because we have two pointers. OK, so how do we attach? We need to actually do this, you know, next of Q to point to P. So this is my P. So this is my first step next of or. OK, next of Q should point to this. Now, similarly, I have this second statement, right? The previous of P should point to Q. Previous of P should point to Q. So that is my uh, second statement. So if I execute these two statements, I will be establishing these two links. In other words, in other words, the Q that means the new node will get attached to this. OK, the last one of course is that we need to alter this P and make sure that it points to Q. So that is our uh, last statement. So that now you can see P points to 12, which is the first node and uh, the next pointer of P points to the 15th node and 15th node next is null. 15th nodes previous is pointing to 12 and hence our new node 12 is attached very comfortably. So the statements for now it is like remember that uh, since we don't have any previous node with respect to this uh, new node being added, so we can put this previous link field as null in the beginning itself or at the end. It doesn't make any difference. OK, so what is the first statement? It is next of Q is equal to P next of Q equal to P. The second statement is nothing but previous of P, P should be equal to Q. And finally, P should take the address of Q. So now we have attached successfully this new node to the existing node called 15. OK. The same thing is true, like even if you want to add the third node, we would do the same. So there is no need to show that. So now we will convert this into an algorithm that is insert friend into a doubly linked list. So get the memory being allocated for new node and put the info and previous of Q nil as we already said and uh, next of Q equal to P. And uh, next of Q equal to P that is also very simple. And uh, the only thing that we need to take care here is that whether we are adding the first node or a node to an existing doubly linked list. So if P is not null, that means we are adding to an existing one. So we execute previous of P, that is previous of P equal to Q. Now, if not, supposing if this is not the case, we don't need to do this actually, and we can directly say that P points to Q because we have already adjusted the links. So this difference, or you can check first whether it is null, you know, P is pointing to null and you can return immediately. Either way, it's fine. You know, check this first and if it is null, create the first node. Otherwise, you can do the rest. So the design could go in any way. So this is uh, the algorithm that shows how we could add a new node in front of the D1 doubly linked list or when it is a first node itself. OK, so this is the snapshot which shows starting from it's a it's an animation so people can easily understand. So let me just uh, erase this so that so when I say uh, get node, so Q is uh, raw node and uh, info. There is a second statement info of Q gets the element. Let's assume E is 15 and the uh, previous of Q is null and uh, next of Q is P. Let's assume that uh, you know 
P, you know, it comes as null in the beginning, obviously. So we will be adding null to this next, you know, link field. So now we have successfully created, uh, uh, you know, the first node pointed being pointed by Q. Now we have to just make P is not null. Actually, P is null. So this statement is not executed. And hence we will just say P pointing to Q. That means. Yeah, P pointing to Q. OK, that uh, is the second node. So P pointing to and return P. So this first node will be returned. Supposing assume that you are going to now call the same with this as the doubly linked list. That is now this time P is actually pointing to 15. So again, okay, I think the animation goes uh, in such a way that 90 is the first one and 15 is the second element. So P is pointing to 90. Either way, it's fine. I mean, whatever be the elemental value. So the idea is that we are trying to add second node to the existing ones. We'll assume that P now pointing to 90, which is my current doubly linked list with one node. 15 is the new one. So next of Q, you can see here is pointing to P and P this time is not null. And hence previous of P it is this one. You can see that is previous of P is pointing to 15. So this is also done and uh, P now will take on Q. Correct and now this will be returned. So now 15 is inserted in front of 90. So it's done. Now even if you take the third, the same thing will be true. Now let us assume that we would like to insert an element somewhere in the middle. That means after some kth node. That means after a key node. Key is given as an input and uh, uh, you know the uh, elemental value, what element you want to add uh, you know as a new node that is also given. So we'll assume that the kth node is 12. Okay, kth node is 12 and the node to be added or inserted is 99. Okay, now how are we going to insert this? So observe carefully here because remember we have previous and next pointers and uh, the sequence of operations are very important because if you change the sequence, the entire insertion will fail. So we have to be very careful. Now, assume that we establish a loop and try to browse through this doubly linked list and uh, reach the key node. So that part I'll show you in the algorithm that we have also shown in the singly linked list. The concept is same. So start from the first node, making key K to point to P and compare the key with the info field of K. Okay, since, I mean, if it's equal, stop, otherwise keep going. So let's assume that uh, we have reached the key node by doing this process and now K is pointing to 12, which is my X, that means the key. And now I have to attach this node Q being pointed by Q and remember that we may have some nodes after this. So it should go and sit here in between 12 and 47. So as usual, create new node for Q, which I have not shown here. And info field of Q is put 99. That also is straightforward. And now the linking part. So as usual, the thumb rule is that don't break this link, existing link but attach the link because you can add any number of pointers to a node. So you can you can point to a node with any number of pointer variables. It's not going to affect our program. I mean, it's not a syntactically wrong or semantically also wrong. I mean, it, it is perfect. But 
deletion of any link may cause problems because you may not be able to get the successive set of nodes. Okay, so that's why you can see here that any, uh, I mean, before uh, deleting any link, we try to attach. Since this node, new node, I mean, the next field of, uh, you know, uh, the new node should point to 47 because we are going to add 12 and then 99. So obviously the next field of 99 should point to 47. So next of Q should point to the address of this. What is the address of this? The address of 47 is available from K. That is next of K. So next of K is the address of next of K is the address of 47. What is, okay, those are the previous, of course, K, it's already there. So, in order to make sure that the next field of Q points to this, so you can see next of Q should point to next of K. So, it's perfectly correct. Because the address of 47 is nothing but next of K, that is this one. So, we have attached this link. Now, similarly, we will add a new link from here. You can see here. I'm not breaking again. So these two will be broken later. So before that, I will attach. So previous of Q should point to what? K. So previous of Q should point to K. So we have successfully uh, made the previous pointer of Q and also the next pointer of Q. So previous pointer of Q points to 12. The next pointer of Q points to 47. Perfect. Next, we can now show that the next field of K should point to 99 and not 47 because this is my new node. So what is my next field? Next of K should point to Q. But there is one hitch here. So if I execute this first, right? Next of K address will be modified. Now, this, if it is modified, then we'll not be able to detach this link properly. So that's why you can see here, we need to execute this first. Okay, so the previous of next of K, previous of next of K should point to Q. So this is my third statement. In other words, 47th previous node is nothing but this. So how do I get this? This is very simple. Previous of next of K is going to point to Q. What is fourth one? Next of K should point to Q. Now suppose if you interchange third and the fourth statement. Okay. Now next of K, since you are accessing here, next of K is appearing on the left hand side. So in case if this comes first, let's say, so the next of K gets modified and you'll be using a wrong address for its previous link. So before modifying next of K, we should actually do this. The, that is the key point to note here. So that's why I've given a different color that you have to be very careful about three, third and fourth. You can interchange first and second actually. Whether you do this first or this first, it doesn't matter, right? So, so previous of Q can do it first or this first. So uh, we are not going to reuse these links. This is separate, this is separate, but you can't interchange third and the fourth. So keep this in mind and when you uh, try to change this, the results will be uh, you know, not as expected. So that is the key point. Okay, so now the algorithm corresponding to this, we have to take care of all cases because remember that we are accessing lot of, uh, you know, previous and next. And if any of this is null, right? Supposing assume that, okay, let me erase this. 
assume that I want to insert after this 15, right? Assume that I want to insert after 15. Okay. So this time, let me take this as X. Oh, sorry, 88. We will take 88. Now what happens? My, if I execute these uh, statements, uh, you know, in the same sequence, next, uh, so this is my Q. What is my K? This one. This is my kth node. After this, I want to insert 88. So next of Q, that is this one, is next of K. That's okay. Next of K is this one. So this we can erase. So next of Q is nothing but, I mean, is equal to next of K. So it points to this, no problem. Previous of Q points to K. That is also no problem. Now we'll see whether it works or if it works, it's fine. Otherwise, we'll see how to repair this. Okay. So now these two links, no problem. Now next of K and its previous. So this is my next of K. Its previous is this, right? And it should point to Q, correct? So this will point to Q. Because when I add this 88, the previous of 12 is nothing but 88. Now coming to the last one, next of K, next of K should point to Q. Okay, now 88 previous is 15, next of 15 is uh, 88, next of 88 is 12, previous of 12 is 88. I think perfectly all right, even if I want to add this, you know, after the first node itself, since we are not accessing this, it's not going to harm our code. You know, these four statements is not going to harm. So still my 88 will be added. The same thing would be true. We don't know again. Okay. Supposing if I want to add at the end. Okay. I'll take this. Because we will check that also. So let me just take this as 10. Okay, now this is my Q. This is my K. Because if it works for first node, last node and middle node, our code can be used uh, very comfortably without uh, having any problem. Okay, so what is next of Q? Next of Q is this. Uh, should point to next of K. Okay, next of Q, what is next of K? It is null. So next of Q is null. Previous of Q should point to K. That means this one is K, perfect. Then next of K, okay, next of K is, is what? Next of K is null. So this next of K will be null. You are trying to access its previous, which is wrong. It's a fatal error. You can't access like that. Okay. So next of K is null and its previous is what? It's not, I mean, it doesn't exist. So though uh, this code, uh, you know, uh, uh, first two actually gets executed properly. That is next of Q equal to next of K. That is this one. And uh, previous of Q, that is this one, points to K. That is also okay. But the problem is next of K and its previous 
is actually since this being the last node, so next of k obviously it is null and you can't access its previous. So though this this gets executed, this is wrong. So when this is wrong, don't worry about this. Next of k again the same problem because next of k is null. So you're trying to attach, uh, you know, I mean assign some address called q to this. So both these statements will fail. So we have to take care of this condition. So if it is, I mean, if the kth node is the first node, no problem. If the kth node is this, then, uh, you know, insert after uh, this kth node fails. So that uh, has to be taken care in the code or in the algorithm. You can see here straight away, the key node is at the end. So we have some different kind of, I mean, set of uh, statements here. And uh, these statements, if the kth node is not the nth node, that means the last node. Okay, so k starting from beginning and you search for the kth node. And uh, if k is nil, node is not found as usual. And get the uh, new memory being allocated. And uh, if next of k is not null, <coughs> right? Because that's exactly what we have been talking about. Whenever next of k is not null, it is not the last node. In case if it is yes, it's being the last node. So this checking, you know, if statement will tell us whether we are at the last node or otherwise. So a simple if then else will help us in modifying the code. So this is not the last node, not this. Yes, is the last node. So we are comfortably or we are making sure that we are not going to access its nil or null for the next of k. You can see here it works point. So this is same as the previous one like next of q equal to next of k and previous of q equal to k and previous, you know, all that is same. Now comes the crucial part, very interesting one, where we will show now how we could actually delete a given uh, node, assuming that the node exists in the list. As usual, we have to look for both found and the not found case. So, k is the pointer variable which is initialized to the first node that is being pointed by p and browse through this entire list double link list and look for the kth node and once you find the kth node stop your k and you can delete without having any additional variable so we will just show that uh, how it could be done right so we have uh, assumed here that my key node to be deleted is 12. So I just make k to point to p and then compare. OK, it comes to this and stops. You can see. Now how to drop this? It's very simple that this pointer should no longer point to this. Insert it should point here. And its previous should not point to this, but it should point to this. So these are the two uh, links or statements that are required. So how do we do that? So take the address of this. So how do you access this sitting at this point? So first come here. What is the address of this node? It is previous of K. It is previous of K. What is the address of this node? It is next of k. So we have the addresses of both the predecessor and the next. So next of k. We have the addresses of both the predecessor as well as the next node. That's where things become easier for us to delete. Now if you have the addresses, then it becomes easier. So how you just access its next field. So next field of previous of K, you can see here, should take, so it should appear on the left hand side, the address of 
this. So what is the address of this node? Next of k. Done. Similarly here, what is the address of this? That is previous of next of k. That is this one. Previous of next of k should point to this node. What is the address of this node? Previous of k. Right? So it's as simple as that. So since you have the addresses of the previous and next of any kth node, because you are able to see both backwards and the forward. So that's the advantage. So these two statements, if I execute, it's fine. But now we have to check whether it works for uh, both the first node and the last node. Middle node, it works absolutely no problem. So let us assume now this is not my key. K is my key. The first node is my key. OK, now what happens? What is previous of K? Previous of K is actually null, right? Now you are trying to access its next field. Now again, this fails. Right? And we don't need to check the other one, but still, you know, the next of K, I think there is, uh, I mean, previous of next of K, uh, there shouldn't be any problem because anyway, you have nodes. Right? So since this statement fails, I don't think that we can employ these two even for the first node. So now let's assume my kth node is the last one. See, whenever it doesn't work for first and last node, we have to modify the code. Okay. Now, what is previous of k? Previous of k is this. So, there are some nodes, obviously. Uh, first node, I mean, only one node case we are not taking care of here. That's very simple. So definitely there will be some node two and above. So previous of K and its next field, there is no problem. So this works and next next of K. Now there is a problem. What is next of K? It's null. So next of K when it is null, this won't work. So here second statement fails. So for the first node, the first statement fails. And for the last node, the second statement fails. So in either case, this code cannot be used when the kth element is first or the last. It can perfectly be used for middle nodes. So we will take care differently. So that is shown here in the algorithm. So as usual, start from the first node, look for the kth node. And if k is null, node for not found. And if it is found, only one node case. Okay, that means both the left and the right pointer. If it is null, uh, I think there is only one node. So you can just, uh, you know, make p is null because you are going to delete that and return p. So this is only one node case. The last node and the first node. So those two are taken care separately. So if next of k is null, what does it mean? It is the last node. If the previous of k is null, it is the first node. You can see here, if previous of k is null, it is the first. If the next of k is null, it is the last node. Now you can very easily adjust the links in order to make sure that you can delete that. Else these two statements. Okay. So supposing if this is the last node, Assume that you have found out that it's very simple that you put this as the null. So you are dropping this. So how to access this? That is uh, the previous of K and its next field. You can see here previous of K and its next field should be null, which is nothing but next of K or null also you can put it. Similarly for the first node K, supposing talking about first node to be dropped, then this has to be null. So how do you access this? Come to this, that is next of K and it's previous. So you can see here that also you can put or uh, uh, you know, put two statements that is P pointing to because that's the first node. So P should be advanced next, uh, you know, one and previous of P null. So that's also very simple. That is P should no longer point here. It should come here, number one. 
and its previous if you put null so this becomes deleted automatically so you can actually deallocate memory for this otherwise you will get a dangling reference so that's how we delete uh, first node and the last node and uh, we also take care of the middle node by executing these two statements so this gets executed very very easily without causing any problems okay yeah so we here we come to the end so we have successfully seen how a doubly linked list can be created how you can add uh, new elements or nodes in the front or middle or at the end and how to delete a node again whether it could be first node or the last or the middle node so thanks for watching and we will meet again with another topic thanks for watching again